Good afternoon. Welcome to episode 683. And topic today is going to be a doozy. Um, I might mess with some of your perspective on religion, but I'm going to do that. Let me choose the title and choose myself, and then we'll roll up our sleeves and get into this. So this again is episode 683, and the title today is going to be fun. Um, back to the beginning, Adam and Eve, why we are messing up. That's going to make sense in a moment. Before I jump in, though, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what this is about. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, international and international and inspirational speaker, because I am both. Yes, I am. Um, hi, Mary. Nice to see you here. Thanks for joining in my broadcast. Um, and I am <laughs> a relationship attraction expert, helping women find balance in love, life, and business, because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which inspires these talks and also inspires my work. And these talks, by the way, are called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart that I started over two years ago. So that's why I'm up to 683 now. And this is a Facebook Live, by the way, I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page. And it goes out to my business page and onto YouTube as well. I'll give you those links at the back end. Um, so if you're here live, you can interact. And if you're not, you can put comments in afterwards, either place. So, hey, Michelle, nice to see you as well. So today I'm gonna basically pull back the, um, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna pull back. Well, I'm gonna check, I'm gonna, I'm gonna up the conversation because the topic today is about um, the origin story. <laughs> I don't mean Spider-Man, I mean the origin story of the paradigm of relationships as taught by the Bible. Yes, I'm gonna go in and mess with that. So if you, if you don't like hearing about this, please put your fingers in your ears or just don't even watch. But if you're interested in, in where I'm coming from and what this might help you understand better about relationships, let's jump in, shall we? So again, this is about Adam and Eve and the origin story, so to speak. So back, back to the beginning about why we get messing up. And I'm using particularly about relationships, but there's a lot more going on in this context, also about men and women because of the way that this was told. Now, I need to preface this by saying that um, coming from a Jewish background, I did have a different understanding growing up. And being a more spiritually based person nowadays, I tend to look at the Bible through a different lens. So this may or may not match what you believe, and it may, may, it may even cause you a front. So I'm just warning you ahead of time. Again, if you don't want to listen, please tune out. If you want to get into the deep discussion and enjoy the conversation, feel free to interact. But if you're going to just get upset about this, don't watch. <laughs> it's like, turn your head away now. So here's the thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I had a friend might actually comment. I posted a request last week, actually, about questions people want to add about relationships. And one of my friends posted a comment about Adam and Eve in the beginning. And I was like... I never thought of that before, so let me... But when I started thinking about what she was asking, I really got some clarity. So let me dive into this. The Bible origin story about Adam and Eve, where we're supposed to have come from, the human race supposed to have been built from, and I'm using supposed to because I have a different belief system, was that basically two, th well, two main things at, that, at play here that I think are the are roots for a lot of our challenges. One of which is the fact that Eve wasn't autonomous on her own. She came from Adam. like. She was made from his rib. Forget the, the, the biological challenges of that, but there's a whole thing about hierarchy that's put in the right place right there. That's one of the things which I have an issue about the Bible being very patriarchal, and I'll get that one in a minute. The second part is the fact that they were innocent until the snake tempted them with the fruit of knowledge that, and it is, the, it is knowledge tree, by the way, in the story, the fruit of knowledge that basically caused them to discover shame, guilt, judgment, and everything else. So, up until that point, apparently, everything was magical. There was no fear. They walk around naked and everything was fine and it was sexual and everything was wonderful. But then this apple thing happened and everyone's in trouble. So, that part alone, I sit, I sit with and realize that we have had for 2,000 years a, oh, I was going to say propaganda. That may not be the right word. A, a, a fictional story that's been put, that's been portraying how we should live our lives. First of all, it makes things like sexuality, intimacy, um, even nudity, very um, negative and wrong and must be hidden away and secret and everything else. Now, I'm not saying we should be out there just you know, humping each other in broad daylight naked. I don't mean that. That's an interesting vision I just had, which I don't want to give you but the reality is is that we've had a negative connotation and a disdain for sexuality for a long time and in this country especially it's a very puritanical viewpoint where it's okay to see people being beheaded and guns going off and people getting killed in action movies and on the news but it's not okay to see somebody full, full frontal naked 
for example. These disparities and these inequities for me feel very frustrating because I see, and I don't mean that literally, well, maybe literally, but I recognize that there's such a disparity here because we have a cultural hypnotism going on that puts, it, puts these things in an unbalanced place where violence is okay, but sexuality is not. Because in the back of the beginning of the Bible, there was no taboo about violence. They didn't even talk about it. In fact, violence was used throughout the Bible to illustrate various teachings. But at the beginning, in the origin story, back at the beginning, it was all about making sex wrong. That's one thing. And I'll come back to that in a moment. The other side of the piece is this inequity between men and women. Even in the Bible, women came second. Now, my belief, may not be yours, but it's my belief, is the Bible wasn't written by God or Jesus, just to be out there. Um, I can go a whole different, I can, do, I can do a whole other talk about Jesus and his origin story, come from a Jewish background and from my own studies and spirituality. I wouldn't put it in the same way a lot of Christians do, just to be clear. But the reality is that the Bible was created by men, human men, who were setting up and creating a new cult called Christianity. Yes, I'm calling it a cult. Because basically what a religion is, is a cult with a lot more members than a cult normally has. I mean, actually flipped a, flipped a meme on that one. But anyway, so the Bible was written by men to control the masses. Because that's what really religion's about. It basically organizes people to become followers, not leaders. And for those of you who are getting like going, whoa, what's he talking about? Stay tuned, there's more to this. Because I'm realizing very, very clearly that not only have we have a document that became the de facto law of the land, besides political law and, and um, judicial law, but also puts in place rules of living life, the Ten Commandments, for example, which aren't in themselves a bad thing. But before that, with the origin story again about how Eve was taken from the rib of Adam, it very quickly puts into play that man comes first, woman comes second. Now, forgetting the whole point about who birthed them, because Adam and Eve didn't just appear out of nowhere, so either they were birthed by something, somebody, perhaps a mother, which means the feminine comes first, just a thought, or they're simply aliens that land on the planet from some other place, which is a whole other conversation which we're not having right in it right now. But my point about this is this disparity in equality between men and women that goes back that far. It's not just about the fact that the culture has developed that way, it was imprinted that way from 2,000 years ago. So we have an opportunity, at least I believe we all do, I mean, whoever watches this at least, that we can maybe rewrite history, meaning that we can change the conversation and to erase what has basically been a lie that's been imprinted as a legend in our culture for two millennia, which is that women were never equal to men. And that I want to sustain very clearly is not accurate. I'm very passionate, especially in my conversations of late, that women must indeed be honored and respected as much as men, if not more so because of the history. But since the feminine is waking up, thank God, and thank God, <laughs> thankfully, and since also the feminine is being called forward more than ever because this puritanical, patriarchal, misogynistic culture, is that three good words? That's three good words. That's been driving this world for the last 2000 years is basically pushing it off a cliff. All the problems we're having with, with, with uh, climate change and with population that's banging out of balance and with refugees and all these other things that are happening is because it's, it's not because of, but it's at the, it's the results of what men have been doing in the masculine, not, excuse me, not the masculine, it's the masculine reserve, in the machismo patriarchal methodology. I have no proof on this. However, I believe if women were running the world, I did talk about this a few weeks ago, this would, we wouldn't be here in this situation. We'd be much better off. Both the environment and the cultures and economies and peace and cooperation. A lot of what's happening right now with Brexit, for example, since I have a certain invested interest in that, is because it's about power plays, egos banging heads. Again, the male-dominated focus keeps making that result. And I say we trace it all the way back to that origin story because, hang on, <coughs> the end of this cough it's just taking a time to go away because back at the beginning you know in the original bible God wasn't a she God was a he according to the bible Jesus was a he um, I want to get the whole thing about Mary Magdalene as being a 
prostitute versus being his wife. That's a whole other conversation, by the way. But everything along the early journey of the Bible, both Old and New Testament, has a focus about putting into the content, I'll change my word, content, a story that keeps putting men first. You know, all of the women in the Bible were second class citizens. So anybody reading the Bible, even if they weren't taken in consciously, were believing at a subliminal, subliminal, level, subliminal level, if they're a woman, that they come second to men. Which is a large part of why women are suffering in relationships. I'm tying this to relationship particularly, but it's, it's, it's applicable to societal structure and to business and to the world and what we're doing. But put in the relationship context for a second. When you grew up reading the Bible and various teachings that came from it in Sunday school and other places too, men would be under the assumption that they run the show. Women would be under the assumption that they come second. Not necessarily consciously, but it's in the wiring, especially when you're learning at five, six years old. So as an adult, when you get into a relationship, women oftentimes don't ask for what they want. Now, I know I'm making a big leap from saying they read the Bible, therefore they want us for what they want, but there's a, there's a parallel in here. Women in relationships have always been treated because of the way the structure's set up. You know, it's, it's, the, it's, the, um, it's the way hierarchy set up even relationships, man and wife, oftentimes. Not so much, not, it's not woman and husband, it's man and wife. So again, the, 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 the hierarchy or the, the uneven levels is men first, women second. Which is what the challenge I think we're facing right now is because for a start, men have lost their way in relationships. I'm going to put that one out there as well. And women aren't being honored, respected, and appreciated for the power that they really are. I'm aiming to change that in my talks and my conversations. And this year, a lot more work's coming out in my, in my well, I believe, speaking opportunities to share this message more widely because we're in a place now where it has to change we've we've been on this road now for say over 2000 years where our culture hasn't really progressed that, that far culturally speaking it's progressed on a lot of other areas for the good the technology and the things we've advanced that way and the bad and then what we've done to the environment but there's more to be done and i think i believe i feel more viscerally than ever that it's time to put women in charge I know that's such against the grain to say that. But the reality is it's time we had, and I'm not saying we need a matriarchal society, but maybe we need that for a spell just to, just to course correct everything that's under, out, of way, out of whack right now. But more than that is we need a balanced society. We need an equality understanding between men and women, period. That doesn't put women second, and doesn't put men second. There maybe needs to be some sort of balancing because with the pendulum swinging from one side to the other, it may feel like there needs to be a, um, I mean, to be justice by putting women in charge and men second. I'm not going to argue with that one. But I also believe ultimately what we're moving toward, what we need to have right now, is an equality of both and respect for both. So we have freedom to choose without removing the possibility for romance and the masculine and feminine conversation, which is something separate, which I talked about yet, um, yesterday, I believe. It was yesterday or Saturday I talked about that. So this is a reminder or an encouragement or a... Um, a suggestion to look at what you've been programmed into believing because with the Bible being um, everywhere it's quite possible your upbringing was influenced by it and with again with the origin stories of Adam, of Adam and Eve is my sort of go-to easy ones to talk about it's very obvious to me that women have been shortchanged in respect in advisement and also in being accepted and honored as being who they are, which is my work, my work is so much about that in what I do with my clients. To have a place where you are honored and respected, to be able to be supported, to lead in your own way, and to then also have relationships that step up to that level of who you are, that for me is, um, it's vital, it's necessary, and it's time. So, I need to vent that one out, I guess. Um, this is one of those topics that I find is, is really hit me when I was sitting with it, just how, how out of whack we are because of what was planted 2,000 years ago. So if you have questions about this or thoughts about this, please put them below. I welcome the response, either interactive live or some still on or afterwards when I sign off. This is something that I know is part of the bigger conversation I've been having for quite a while now. That, as I said, 
you know, my title on my broadcast are messages for the masculine, inspiring a feminine heart. The intention with that is to wake women up to the power, the, 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 the majesty there is. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. You wish there were more men like me. I think there are. Maybe not as many yet as there will be. But also about a lot of women who have been running from this and being actually more upset and bitter versus taking, their, taking the reins back, taking control and running their own lives in, in a more powerful way. So thank you for the feedback, Mary. Mary, I appreciate that. This is something that is not complete for me. I know I've got more to talk about, but this is another one of those truth bombs I wanted to drop because frankly, I don't want to hold anything too sacred or sacrosanct. Sacrosanct is different, sorry. I hold certain things sacred, yes, but not sacrosanct. Um, and the Bible needs to be looked at from a much different viewpoint than most people look at it. I, I, when I hang out with people who are very religious and very Christian, especially Catholic Christian type devoted, it's actually uncomfortable for me now. Not in a bad way I, can, I, I judge them, it's more about I see differently. So I hope this message has given you some thought about maybe the Bible you've been studying, if you do study the Bible, maybe look at it a little differently than you have before. It's a... <laughs> the challenge with this is it's like you might start going down a rabbit hole of understanding and realization there's a lot more to the world than you thought. Um, we have a hierarchy of structure with the Christian faith and also, well, the, the subsets of that. There's very much men on top, women further down the ladder. And it's, an un, it's been, and it, was a, and it was unintentionally. And that's probably the biggest thing that bugs me. As a man, even as a man, and I feel there's, a, there's an, uh, an affront that was done by this and hasn't been cleaned up yet. So maybe this is a turning point or a starting point to change the conversation. Because frankly, it's time women, earned the res women got the respect they deserved. And that men earned the right to, take, to be their partners versus just assume it's all easy. That's the paradigm I want to shift. So that's my, my message today, my, my, my um, mini rant. It wasn't a true rant, but I wanted to speak it out and just, just put the seeds out there so you can think about it. So I hope this will give me some food for thought because that's what I like to do is provide you with something to nourish on. So that should give you something to think about. Hi, McCall. Um, actually, just finishing up, I dropped my two truth bombs already, so you have to go back and watch the replay in a moment. Um, if you are looking for more help in the area of love and relationships, I will put the link in the comments, as always, for this conversation with me. It's my gift to you. And I'd love to have your feedback on this topic. It's a deep topic, I know. So, sorry, Mary, would you say that? You want to come out of a place of having... You come out, come, given up on relationships. The men in your generation seem conflicted. The last guy you dated, a Catholic... Wanted, me, wanted you to pay for dinner so we'd be equal. He paid on, his, on the date he'd had with the night before, not with you, but, and he asked if he wanted me to hold the door for him too. Oh, you asked, you asked him if you wanted to hold the door for him too. Yeah, that was kind of a good one to give that response to him, yeah. I've done a whole couple of talks on gentlemanly conduct. That plays into this too, but I'm more about the big picture about the Bible. So this was a Bible bashing moment. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hi, McCall, good to see you too. Um, so anyway, I'm wrap this up and get up and get, content, get complete so people can watch the replay because I don't want to drag that too far. But I do understand that feeling. And that's the thing. There's a lot of generational issues going on too or generational patterns imprinted on men that are playing out still too. So I understand you feel, how you feel, Mary. Um, this is something that I'm finding is very much um, a disturbing topic. Just like, yeah, the Bible. It, it's, <laughs> again, I'm going to piss people off with this, I know. And that's fine because I have no um, fear of that. And I have no fear of fire and brimstone either because I didn't grow up with that, that teaching and I don't believe in it either. So what are your thoughts on Adam and Eve and the way that relationships have come out of that? There's a lot more in I didn't cover. I'm just thinking if there's anyone to cover about this. The relationship paradigm has been that dysfunctional though when the women was unbalanced. Hi, Michelle, what are you saying there? Women are smart cookies. You, whoops. Thank you, I'm glad you don't make you merry. Michelle, women are smart cookies. cookies. You have men believe that, that you have men believe that they are higher tier behind find every great man is a phenomenal woman. This is true of thousands of cases. You're one of them. Yeah. And it's time, I believe, for women to be in front. So it's not just women behind behind the man. Yes, there are phenomenal women behind the great men. But some is some great women. And one have some great men behind them supporting them as well. I had a I, I had a situation or you we know, aware of a while ago where men and women were both um powerful and strong people who then honor and respected each other and supporting each other that means a whole healthy relationship 
So what was that McCall? Oh, you're talking to Mary. So try telling a guy how you prefer a date to go up front so then you can set these expectations about you. That's good, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. And I, I know we're on the same page about this conversation too. So, all right. So having said that, um, <laughs> having dropped those truth bombs, done that a lot lately. There's some stuff coming through that's getting deeper. The, um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Feel free to join me every day. Um, this is episode 683, so a lot of them are out there. So the replays for these and all the other ones I've got. Um, sorry, personal page first is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. You can follow me there. My p business page has all my replays on it. So, yeah, <laughs> keep it coming. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, so um, replays on my business page, which is barryselby.author. Yes, it is my very time top of the Data Society. I agree with you. And then also I put them on YouTube for those people who don't go on Facebook. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it's in my playlist called Messages for the Masculine under my channel, which is Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I do invite your comments and questions, thoughts about this. Again, I put the link in the comments for the discovery session if you want to reach out for help. And uh, if you want to trigger some people <laughs> and upset some people, feel free to share this with people. Might, uh, might, might get some uh, interesting responses. But thank you for being with me. This, one's, this is one of my, um, my venting episodes. I hope it's been of help to you and has been given you some food for thought. And I'll be back again tomorrow with something maybe the same, maybe deeper, maybe different. But I'll definitely be back again tomorrow at 5 p.m. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of your... Whoop, another comment. McCall. Oh, I, yeah, I understand. But yeah, Mary, McCall's just saying women can be brutal if they are feminists and a guy is kind to their... And a guy's... Whoops. And a guy's kind to their date, they can be lambasted as a result. So his, there's huge potential for for men, not always that them, they themselves are confused. Yeah. Mahalo to you, to Michelle. Good to see you too. That's the thing. I was talking about the imbalance one way, but there's also, just to answer McCall's point in this one, there's been also been a swing the other way by some people, some women, who've actually overcompensated in a way that's been basically copying the men. I talk about femin feminis feminism, not feminist, but feminism, and the masculine and feminine as equality and balance, but the challenge a lot of women have taken feminism as a machismo way of doing things, which is just as bad as the, as the um, misogyny of men doing the same thing. So it's definitely room for improvement on both sides of the conversation. This talk though is more, more about the imbalance from the Bible side of things. So yeah, I dragged the Bible into this. So again, I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. I appreciate your feedback. And again, questions, comments below are welcome, as is already happening. And uh, I'll jump in the comments later on too. And uh, as always, take care of yourself. And again, I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Feel free to join me then. And uh, have fun. And yeah, what are your thoughts on the Bible? I'm curious to know your comments. I'll see you then. Bye.